good. Okay, all right. Brother Wade, no. uh, with us, Sister Betty? No, he's watching Carolina. Oh, that's right. They came on at seven tonight. Oh, yeah. Ever since mm -hmm. I took that job, I ain't even, I don't even know nothing about Carolina basketball no more. Yeah. <laughs> you got a, you got something to replace it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The Lord's took over. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Sister Kim, it's good to have you tonight. Oh, you're on mute. You're muted. Uh oh. Your video went out. You're muted. You're muted. Can you unmute? Yeah. There you go. Okay. I just tried to, I just figured out what, how to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is this your first time doing Zoom? No, uh, no, oh, okay. not Zoom, but how to, um, so they tell we're having Sunday school tonight. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then like, we, I don't know. It's anyway, I just, yeah. I saw a schedule and I had to go back and find it. Oh, okay. I have been doing it when everybody in the beginning, when I were doing Sunday school, um, what was it on Sunday morning? Sundays, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before they started doing the preaching and the parking lot. Okay. And then I kind of fell out because I, I lost contact with how to do it. Yeah. We're good. We're happy to get you with us tonight. And um, well, we got all ladies tonight so far. Well, we got to get them men, boy. We got the, well, I don't know what we're going to have to do with them. What, you, what would you do without the ladies, Dave? Uh, you wouldn't do nothing. I'll tell you that now. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Lord, I'm, I want to issue a challenge out to the men tonight. Well, I want to issue a challenge out. We need some men to stand up. We ain't cutting mm -hmm. no wood. We ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but going in our pocketbooks, I mean, that's good and everything. <laughs> but <laughs> there's other work to be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Well, that's we're true. Thankful for what they do. Page page. Whatever it is. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> Mama's a grin and she knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Sister Frida. Sister Freeze joining us. Sister Joanne's with us. Hey, Sister Jo. All right, we'll get started. I want to uh, see if we have any prayer requests tonight. Do we have any prayer requests from anybody that, uh, you know, out at the church, we don't, we can't catch up with all the prayer requests that we have in our community sometimes. So this is a forum where we can, uh, y'all might know some people that need prayer requests that have prayer requests that we don't know about at the church uh, as far as the preachers and everything. Yeah, Is there anybody, anybody that uh, y'all know of we need to write down on our prayer list? David, uh, Miss Catherine was asking prayer for Craig. Yeah, we just found out today um, that he was in the hospital. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Brother Craig, yeah. Um, any other prayer requests? Hey, Sister Frida. Hello. Any other prayer requests? David, remember, I have a first cousin that passed away today. Uh, Jimmy Locklear. Jimmy Locklear. Family. Remember his family. Right. Remember his family. Is that three zeros? One, two, three, six, okay. nine. Any five. other prayer requests? Nine, David, my daughter, uh, Ivania, married to Dwayne, is going to have surgery the 4th, oh, and getting it's going to be a surgery. Remember her, Ivania. Did you say Sonia? Ivania, E-V-O-N-I-A, Locklear. Is it on here? That's my question. Ivania Locklear, surgery. Vanya. Yeah, very Was that another request? Okay. So I have Craig Locklear, Jimmy Locklear family, and Ivania Locklear on my list. No All righty. Well, I'm going to say a, a word of prayer, then we're going to have Sister Ruby go uh, get started. So uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Lord, most merciful God, Lord. We are just so thankful, Lord, that you are there for us when you, when we need you the most, Lord, and when we're down and out, God, Lord. We need strength, God, from you. Lord, just thank you for our families, Lord, that you've blessed us with, with daughters and sons and cousins and family members, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, Lord. We thank you for those, Lord. Lord, thank you for your word that we're going to hear tonight, Lord, and let it inspire us. Let it move us, God, to uh, rest and abide in you, Lord, and gain comfort knowing that your word is true, God, in the life, blood of our salvation, Lord. We just thank you for salvation, Jesus, that you saved the wretch like me, Jesus, Lord. You touched us all, God, with your blood, God, on Calvary, Calvary's mountain, Lord. You you wiped us clean, God. You changed us, Lord, and uh, you have given us a purpose, Lord, in life, God, to follow you and to, to go out and do your work, God, and to find be fishes of men, Lord. And we just thank you and ask you to bless this prayer uh, group tonight, this Bible study, Lord, that we would uh, learn and seek you through your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Turn on a few audio. I mean, I'm going to sit right in the center. Okay, see, I don't have to do anything else, do I? Mm -hmm. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Good, good, good. This is our last lesson for the month of February. And I want to open with just a word of prayer as well. Dear Heavenly Father, I commit myself to you. To be all that you would have me to be and not be what Ruby wants to be. And Heavenly Father, I just ask that you bless each one of these ladies here tonight, because I heard some lady speak some time ago, and they said, what would the church be like if only women was in charge? And Heavenly Father, we put a question mark there and we leave it, because we know your will for all of our lives, and we're thankful for our men, we're thankful for our husbands, and we just ask you to lead and guide and direct us in the way that you would have us to go and have us to encourage our husbands. And now we want you to bless each of us. And we want to give you thanks for this opportunity. In thy name we pray. Amen. Okay, now girls, I want you to unmute. And I want, us, I want this to be an open discussion. I want us to be able to talk and share and enjoy each other. Rather than I give you all my point of views, I want you to give me some of yours as well. And you, and if you need to say something, don't worry about, um, you know, buttoning in and saying what you need to say, okay? Um, I'd like to begin with asking uh, Miss uh, Strickland to read our scripture, if she would. Okay. And it and it is called to serve. And it's our devotional reading is Psalms 33, 1 through 12. And our background scripture is Acts 16, 11, 15, 40, and 1 Corinthians 1, 26 through 30. So Miss Strickland, if you will read that for us. Do you want me to read, Miss Ruby, the verses from the courtly? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia, and we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyra Tyra, named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. 
the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And Paul and Silas came out of the prison. They went to Lydia's house where they met with the brothers and the sisters and encouraged them. Then they left. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that were not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus who has become for us wisdom from God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. You know, uh, those scriptures is enough that we could just talk through the, our entire time together tonight. Because if you look at the key verse, and I want to dwell on that key verse just a little bit and go to our uh, outline. It says, the golden tea, tea text, when she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me as a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. So, you know, when you think about the word persuade, what do you think of? You beg. Your heart is open. The expression on your face is humble. You're not saying, come and go to my house and you're looking off, right? You are saying that you're inviting someone to your house to enjoy the time that you plan to spend with them. Now, let's go on over to our lesson names and our lesson outline. And let's think for a moment. Let's go down to... Uh, Humble hospitality builds churches. Think about the people that we worship with. Just, just take your mind and, and just a quick survey. Go through the people that we worship with. We worship with all kinds of people, don't we? We worship with uh, young people, old people, middle-aged people in terms of age. We will worship with... Um, Educated people, uh, people who are skilled, people who are wonderful homemakers, people who are wonderful mothers, you know, just a variety of talents that God brings together. And we are to be humble with whatever talent it is. And let's go on down to 1 Corinthians. It says there to think about all things are possible. All things are possible. When you think about your life and you go back as a child and you think about how we grew up, and let me say me, grew up so poor. So, and I used to laugh and tell my husband, we grew up poo. You had to take the R off. We were poo. We couldn't say poor because we were poo. Because when you got 16 people in your house and your dad's a tenant farmer, um, you, you, they're, they're, it's limited, but we grew up with plenty of love. We grew up with plenty of hum humble hospitality. We grew up knowing what it was to know the Lord, to go to church, and to respect our elders. We knew, we knew, we knew, and to give what we had to give. So let's go on and let's do our introduction here. Let me read that for us right quick. I think it is absolutely wonderful. Hospitality can make careers. Dolly Madison, 1768-1849, wife of the U.S. President James Madison, was a great political asset in her husband's career. 
James certainly had merit as a great writer and political mind, but called today to the father of the Constitution. But he was a shy man, not given to promoting his own interest. After they wed, Dallas parties made people feel welcome and turned guests into a political support, supporters. As the First Lady Dolly largely shaped what it meant to hold the, that position in terms of hospitality and volunteerism. Deidre Matheson's hospitality career began when she was a world traveler on a tight budget. She would stay in hotels to save money. Deidre's experience of bonding with other women travels inspired her to open her own hotels in downtown Houston. Her hostel combined her love of connecting with people with her passion for business. Hospitality made her welcome around the world. Now she welcomes the world to Houston. Going the other direction, we might say that careers can find hospitality as well. The direction is on the focus of, a, of our individual lesson day. So that's what we want to talk about. I can put it here in my lap. Yeah, I'll put it here in my lap. Scroll back again. So we're going to go down now. We're going to go down to, and we're going to start our lesson really with um, B, prayer meeting. And I just want to read that verse. And I did a little um, compound research so we wouldn't read directly out of this book. That we would read some, because we can read this. And we know we know what this is. So I wanted to look at some other point of views and uh, feel free, like I said, to speak up at any time. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place. Hold on just a moment. Let me take this. A, a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. When Luke began writing about Paul and his missionary journey, he used the pronoun they to refer to Paul as his associates. However, beginning in Acts 16 and 10, Luke used the pronoun we which indicates that he has joined these missionaries while they are in Torres. Luke was now part, was not part of Paul's missionary team. Do we have any comments so far? Luke wrote it, but he was not part of the missionary team. Okay. So now we're going to go on to the witness of Philippi, Acts 16, verses 13 through 14. Now, and I'm going to be reading and on the research uh, part that I found. And then I want you to just, when I get ready to read uh, the last statement, I want you to listen very carefully to what it says here. This verse says that on the Sabbath, we went out to the city by a riverside where people was wont to be made, and we sat down and spake unto women, which resorted thither. Paul had adopted the practice of beginning his practice in a city of presenting Jesus Christ in the synagogue, and this is in the book of Acts. But in Philippi, the Jews were apparently few in number, for there was no synagogue. So Luke writes that on the Sabbath, we went out to the city of a riverside where prayer won't be made. They discovered that a group of women met on the Sabbath day near the river outside the city. This spot was probably along with the Gantes River west of the city. The Christian missionaries took advantage of this opportunity and Luke said, we sat down and spake unto the women, which was a resorted feather. The group could not have been large, but that did not stop Paul. He always took advantage of any opening for the gospel that he could find. 
and the fact that only women had gathered there helped to explain why Philippi had no synagogue, for a minimum of 10 men were required to establish one. Whatever the situation exists, a place of prayer could be set aside for the few Jews and prostitutes who wanted to worship. Since these women were observing the Sabbath, since these yeah had some connections with the Ju with Judaism, maybe like Corn Cornelius, which was first the first Gentile convert. Okay, now I want you to listen to this note, the footnote. Eventually, Paul would develop a warm relationship with the Philippine believers. When he later wrote to return, he remembered this day. He wrote that he cherished their fellowship for the first day. See Philippians 1 and 5. He also prayed, paid tribute to the Philippine women, Philippian women, whom he had worked with at that time. Based on that, Luke writes, we can conclude that if Paul and his missionary partners had not found this small group of women by the riverside, the Church of Philippi would not have been organized. Let that sink in for a moment, ladies. Let that just sink in for a moment. How God uses us in the most unusual way, in the most unusual way. Let's go now on over to, on, um, to the next page, and we're going to go to where Lydia was named, and we're going to read him from the book now. We're reading from the book. Lydia was named after the area in within the town of Tyreka was located in the area from which Paul had just come. After having received the vision in which a man of Macedonia had invited him to come over. There is a certain honor in all of this. In Paul's day, Thenyarica was the chief source of dyed fabric. The woman Lydia specialized in purple cloth. This particular work was difficult, but profitable for those with skill. To sell purple cloth was to deal in luxury items. So it like it so it's likely that Lydia had prosperous a prosperous business, connections in her hometown, and sold products in far flung cities like Philippi. Now, was she an influential woman? Did she have money? But Lydia, yes, yes, Lydia. It says here, Lydia worshipped and feared God. She worshiped and she feared God. Um, as Paul encounters such as one here, he would again, he would again praise these, these women. So now I want to read you the little footnote here. Before salvation, the heart, the inner life, the center of personalities, the seed of spiritual and intellectual life, is so controlled by sin that it is either slow to believers or actually antagonistic to the gospel. This comes from Luke 24 and 25 and Acts 28, 27, 7, 5, 7, chapter 7, 51 and verse 54. Only if God prepares the heart by opening it, enlightening it to understand the gospel, moving it to desire the salvations of blessings and strengthens it with all decree for and to endure the Lord. And that comes from Acts 11, 23. Will the heart become the honest and good heart that receives salvation? And now we're not talking about um, men and women. We're talking about what? We're talking about hearts. And who has a heart? Who has hearts? Everybody. Everybody. So just because you have money, just because you have wealth, or just because you're poor, does it mean that God can use your heart? You have to, that's a, that is what, what is that, ladies? What is that? 
what do you think when you think about the heart? How do you how do you how do you feel that um how how do you feel that God uses our hearts? Do you see somebody that you think that you may need to whisper a prayer for? Just not even know them. Just pass them in the grocery store or pass them going up the grocery store and they look so tired and so worn out. And do you say, Lord, have mercy, bless that person? Or do you walk with your head down like you don't see them? See, God knows our hearts. God knows our hearts. And these women had good hearts, didn't they? These women had good hearts. They had open hearts. And they were willing to, to serve. And Lydia was a role model. She was a woman who had money, who had wealth. And it wasn't money that uh, she got illegal. It told you what she did. And she used it for a good reason. She mm -hmm. used it for a good reason. And I hope and pray that we as Christians use whatever resources we have for good reason. So let's go on now. I want to go on and I want to, um, I'm going to read again a little more research. And it says here, having come to believe that Jesus was the Christ, and this is coming from Matthew 6, 16 and Acts 3 and 17, Lydia was baptized in her household. It was customary in the New Testament time for converts to in Christianity to be baptized. Soon after their conversion, it appeared that Lydia was also baptized. And soon after, she trusted Jesus as her Savior. It's not clear who, who made up her household, but they believed the gospel as well as, as and were baptized along with Lydia. As a well-to-do businesswoman, her household no doubt included servants as well as children. The Greek word for household is the normal term for house. So it could refer to women who work for her, domestic servants, or it could refer to any children she may have had. All of these, as the Lydia and her household were baptized, Luke writes that she besought us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide here. And she concentrated this. The word she besought us means that Lydia urged, urged or pleaded with Paul and his associates to come into her home and abide there as an expression of her newfound faith. She pleaded with these missionaries to abide there in her home for as long as they needed to stay. Lydia's base for asking them to stay with her was faithfulness to God. For she said, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide here. In other words, Lydia was saying that if Paul and his associate took a profession of faith seriously, and considered her to be a true believer in the Lord, they ought to accept her offer of hospitality. On the other hand, if the missionaries had refused to accept her offer, that would simply, that would imply that they didn't consider her, com her conversion to be genuine, but she also was truly born again. The, the last part of the verse says, and she constrained them, the term constrained men by compel by force or to entreat. This indicates that Lydia had to persuade them to stay in her home. The fact that they had to be constrained might indicate that they didn't want to impose on her being careful about causing any perceived improperities by staying in her home. Okay, now our footnote here says, when an outstanding example of Christian Hospitality we see in Lydia. By helping these missionaries in material ways, 
she was serving God. When we assist or help any of God's servants, we are fellow helpers of the truth. We go to John for this. John, see John um, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8. Lydia set forth a splendid example for the church and its followers by other believers in Philippi for the ministry to Paul's needs more than once. So you see, she was not a pretender, was she? She didn't pretend. She was not uh, a woman to say, well, you know, I want to have it at my house because I wanted to see my new china. Or I wanted to see this new uh, leather outfit. You know, she was genuine from the heart. What do we do and how do we do this genuine from our heart? Think about it. what do we do and what do we say that just falls off our lips or, or are we like Lydia? Is it genuine? Does anyone have any comments at this time? No one Ruby, has I, I think, ahead. this is Joanne. Uh -huh. I think um, the ladies prayer group as I read this lesson and studied, uh, the women's prayer group came to my mind several times in that um, the importance of that group. You know, people feel free to call when they're in trouble and they're needing prayer. And I truly believe the women in that group stop and they earnestly pray. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you have a name and sometimes the situation and and you can go to the Lord in prayer and we're more sincere I think uh this group of women praying as a united group of women mm -hmm. amen amen I agree I I agree I definitely agree and you know I think um and I'm, I'm gonna throw this in I like a little humor um when I was in college, I took a, um, a Bible class, and the the guy that was teaching it was a um, a kind of like a stonk male. He was a stonk male. So we were talking about the book of Ruth and talking about, uh, you know, Naomi and her commitment and uh, you know, and so one of the ladies, an older lady in the back of the class speaks and says, well, she says, uh, and he was a preacher too. She raised her hand. She says, I have something I need to say. And he said, well, go ahead. So she said, well, she said, I'm, I said this and I'm going to stick to it. She said, when God made Adam, he rested. And he said, she said, while he was resting, he was thinking. And she said, he said, I can do better. And he made Eve. Well, when she said that, I thought he was going to dismiss the class. He said to her, what did you say? I mean, just right out. She, you know, repeated it. That lady had a time passing that class. You know, she had a time passing that class. And I don't know if, it's, if it, he felt like men were superior to women. I don't know what, you know, I don't, he did not, he did not say what he was thinking he just asked her to repeat it mm -hmm. and from then on to you know she was she was not welcome in that class so you know i i don't i don't know going back to what joe said you know um women have so much sympathy and empathy and i'm not saying some men don't have it but i think it's i think it's a trait that god gave us i think it's a trait that god gave us like Lydia. So let's go on and I want to read the last paragraph and I want to do a footnote on that to Romans number two, corrections to Corinthians. Let me go down to the last paragraph there. Regarding being wise by human standards, Paul was well acquainted with the dangers there. He himself was able to quote Greek philosophers and scholars. And then, you know, you see where you, that comes from while recognizing their own, the overall defeats in, and philosophers not grounded in scripture. So Paul was what? Paul was a very what? Educated man, wasn't he? 
Do you think Paul had to be careful when he was with and with that prayer group with Lydia and them? Do you think he had to be careful not to um not to let them feel that they were less important? And isn't it wonderful, Sister Carolyn, that Paul had that heart in him that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stand up and talk down to you, that you are just as important as I am. Yes. 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 And our footnote here says, note, salvation by its very nature does not depend on a human's value or qualities. Even admired could not change that God had chosen them because of their good qualities. Instead, God has mercy on everyone who has acknowledged their sinful ways. You know, he God, God is an awesome God. Mm. And why does that song say, Oh, what a God is he? Mm. My God is an awesome God. Oh, what a God is he. Mm. Think about it, ladies. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. And as and as we go through our careers in life, as Lydia did. Lydia realized that she had the means to help others, didn't she? Yes. Lydia was not selfish. Lydia was not boastful. Lydia was not arrogant. And the list could go on and go on and go on and go on. And this, and, and in this lesson, it teaches us, it teaches us about. I would say how I need to be as a woman, how I need to be, what it is, my little talents that I have, that I need to share them, that I need to share them, and I need to be all that God would have me to be. So let's turn over to page uh, 222, and I went down to the last paragraph here, and I marked, we are reminded of Peter who, when told that Jesus would accomplish, and accomplish the Father's will by Jesus' humili humiliation, suffering, death, and resurrection in Jerusalem, exclaimed, Never, Lord, and that's from Matthew, Peter did not expect the Messiah to bring victory through death. Now, let's, let's just sit there for a moment and um, think about Peter. And put ourselves in that situation. But let's go on and see what the footnote says there. Paul and Silas had an extraordinary call to Philippi. But while there, they only saw a little bit of the fruit of their labors and soon had to leave. Yet they didn't, they didn't come in vain. Although the group of believers were there was small. Paul and his missionary team laid the foundation for a church at Philippi, which became very prominent, having bishops, deacons, and people that were more generous to Paul than any other church. Mm -hmm. And that comes from uh, Philippi, the Phili uh, not Philippi, Philippians 1, 1, 4, and 14 through 16. This teaches us that those who preach the gospel of Christ should not be discouraged when they don't presently see the fruit of their labors, but rest assured that the seed sown will come up and a plentiful harvest of believers in due time. Now let's 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 sit here uh for a moment and reflect on what brother dave said brother dave said we didn't have any men tonight did he so you know our men might be um they might be praying or they might be doing some other yeah some some other christ-like so, so we're going to think positive now we're going to think positive right ladies we're going to think positive Huh? <laughs> what about it, Charlene? I'm mute, Charlene. <laughs> well, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna think positive. And you know, 
sometimes I had I I had their new resolution, New Year's resolution. And my New Year's resolution for Ruby was my conversation, my character, and my um my conversation and character was going to convey my actions. The way I talked and the way I walked would would be what I needed to be, not what you know. Uh, 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 say what is that? Somebody said, "Do as I tell you to do, and not do as you would have that. Not do what I do." Yeah. yeah, I want to do what God would have Ruby to do. I want to do what God would have Ruby to do, because when you have open heart surgery. And then you have COVID on top of it. A little later on, you have COVID. And you're laying flat on your back. You're going to look up. Yeah. And your conversation and your character better be different. Yeah. It better be different. Because my God, and it's awesome God, but we also is going to pay us for the, the good and the bad, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that may sound harsh, but that is so true. Because I want to, I, I tell Paul so many times, that I want to be a giver in this world. I don't want to be a taker. And when I leave this world, I don't want people to say, every time you saw Ruby, she wanted you to give her something. Or every time you saw Ruby, she wanted to tell you what she had. I want to tell you that I got salvation. I want to tell you that I know Jesus. And I want to tell you, I want to live the kind of life that I need to live day and night. And I want to be like Lydia with what little bit I got. I want to do my part. I want to do my part. Okay, let's go on. And I'm going to ask my cousin, Joanne, does anybody have any comments at this time that you'd like to make about what you got from the lesson? Sister Myrna, what did you, when you read, uh, what did you get from this lesson? Well, when I read the lesson and, and um, studied, and I didn't do an in-depth study, mm -hmm. but what I was thinking, like what comes in your head, the first thought was, this was a small group of women, mm -hmm. and yet scripture tells us that of the churches, the seven churches, Philippians was the one who gave back the most to Paul. That's right. The Philippian church was the, the church that helped to finance his ministry the most. They were the biggest givers. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that says a lot within itself right there. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's not how much you give or or anything like that because God can take little and make Amen. lots. And he Amen. also, another thing was, I think that Lydia was excited about getting Paul Amen. to come and stay in her home because as a young Christian, she knew that Paul was trained in the word and she knew probably if Paul came and stayed in her home that Paul would teach her so much more mm -hmm. yeah. she was eager to learn she was mm -hmm. eager to give from what she had but she was also eager to learn we knew that mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. so I and that was my takeoff yeah mm -hmm. and their and their their spirits um uh, witnessed didn't it it witnessed yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah he he knew he knew she was real you know and then and then the other thing sister Myrna was um when I, our footnotes, it said from that little group, and it didn't say how much education they had, did it? It didn't go in and say how, many, how much education they had, but it said from there came bishops and deacons. What about it, girls? What about it? What about it? Because they were committed. They were, they were committed. committed. They had committed themselves to Christ Jesus. To be all that he would have them to be, mm -hmm. it, wasn't it? Sister Betty, what are you, what's your thoughts? Is she muted? Are you muted, Sister Betty? I'm muting. Give us one of your uh one of your okay. short thoughts. You hear me now? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Uh, I was thinking how influential she was in her in the city of Philippi, mm -hmm. and her influence. Um, showed through her household when she her whole household got saved so Amen. undoubtedly she had a lot of influence on her household and she Amen. was like a role 
in her community and you know opening her home mm -hmm. like you said to paul and having mm -hmm. him in her home uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh you know, years just, go ahead i'm sorry go ahead go ahead me. that's okay I was going to say, years ago, I don't know if y'all remember this, but we had a Reverend Ray Baines. Does anybody remember Reverend Ray Baines that came here to do some missionary work? He was from Oklahoma. Yeah. Do, do any of you ladies remember? That would have been in 72, in 1972, he came here. So he, uh, he was staying with uh, uh, Adolph and Ruth. The first part, the first week he was here. So then the second week he was here, he was to stay with me and Paul. Well, you know, uh, y'all know, God knows. I said, what in the world am I going to do with this minister in my house? And I must have been maybe like 28, 29, 30, somewhere along. And I said, what am I going to talk to him about? You know, how how can I minister? What? Lord, I dreaded that, ladies. Let me tell you, I dreaded that. I dreaded that. And I was working with uh, Miss Emily and uh, Miss Catherine and Miss Maud Cummings, preacher Maud Cummings is why. So I went mm -hmm. to work the, the, that Friday and he was to come that Sunday. And I said to Miss Maud, I said, Miss Maud, I said, you're a minister's wife. I said, tell me how I'm supposed to act, <laughs> what I'm supposed to do and, and just whatever. She said, honey, she said, you go to your bedroom and you pray. And she said, whatever God lays on your heart, you act that way. Well, ladies, he come to our house and it was the most enjoyable visit I think I have ever had. Uh, didn't have much, but what we had, we shared. And what he had with us, he shared. And let me tell you, anytime you get a, an opportunity to, to host one of God's servants, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Um, any do we have any other comments? If not, I'm going to ask um, Joanne to read our conclusion. Is she muted? Joe, are you muted? Are you gone? I will read. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. Our last four weeks have explored the examples of Anna, the prophetess, daughters of Philip, the Samaritan woman, Mary Magdalene, and Priscilla. In Lydia's case, she made use of her status and wealth to serve God. Her influence brought her household to Christ and had a ripple effect in Philippi. Her prosperous business allowed her to host Paul and his companions in her house, as well as the church that would grow from their efforts. These efforts were not accomplished for the glory of Lydia or Paul. Both sought only to follow Christ and lead others to him. We might summarize the accounts from this unit and say that each woman served where God gave her opportunity and gifting. The same holds true today. When a woman senses God's calling on her to use her job, her social connections, and or the spiritual gifts he gave her for his glory, she can and will find a way to serve. While the same is true for men, the nature of women's ministries has often been less visible and sometimes considered less critical in spreading the gospel. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Let's do our glory on the cross. As Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, God chose the cross to show his wisdom instead of using what was already honored and reverend in any human society. And the foolishness of the world became the wisdom of God. 
God still uses people people following the way of the cross to share his wisdom to the world. Let us all continue to seek his wisdom and remain open to others. Foolish things God may choose in place of the wise and the way we seek only God's glory. And let us pray. Lord God, all Christians need places to serve. May we answer you as you call us to the right place at the right time and gift us in the right way to do your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And here's our thought to remember. Seek the wisdom of the cross and serve in its shadow. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed this and may God bless you and give you a good and safe week and keep encouraging our husbands to be all that we would have them to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ruby. Thank you, Sister Ruby. Enjoy that. Appreciate you, Sister Ruby. I'd just like to close with one thing. I know in the Bible it says, when man finds a woman, he finds a good thing. And I feel that that good thing is the heart of that woman. And then also in the Bible, it tells us, oh, here is one. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, strength, and mind. Heart is there for a reason, because God can see your heart. Amen. He knows our hearts. And we just thank God. Sister Ruby's heart was here in this lesson tonight. Brother Paul was here with us. His heart was in this lesson tonight with us. And we, we appreciate you all joining because your hearts were here tonight with, mm -hmm. with God. And we just thank you and bless your souls for being here and just, just being so uh, consistent and, and persistent, yearning for the word of God. Because the word of life is truth. The word of God is truth and the life. Thank you so much. We love you. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.